hundreds of seagulls began to take over one of America's most popular stores. And it all happened in my hometown. I'll tell you the story right after the music. You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. This is Season 4. Before the Seagulls took over, this location in my hometown of Medina, Ohio, served as the first ever Super Kmart in America. First one. Not just Kmart, because we had one of those for years. Across the way, it was just Kmart department store. But they chose Medina, Ohio as the location to open the first ever Super Kmart. And I was eight years old, but I will never forget what a big deal this was for the town. The news coverage, the local politicians, hundreds of people, the grand opening, cutting the ribbon. This was a real boon for the economy. This is the beginning of the 90s. This was sort of that ascension into prosperity. And the convenience factor of this place was crazy. It, just imagine combining a giant eagle and smashing it together with the coals. And while that might not seem exciting now, at the time, huge deal. I mean, you could spend hours at this place. I know I did. As a kid, I swear a quarter of my memories took place at this Super Kmart. I'm thinking right now about being a little kid, just standing in the shopping cart. My mom's eyes are wide open because she's thinking, I can get all my errands done here. And all I can think about is like, get me out of this clothing section. And she's just trying to get me jeans for the start of school. And she's asking me, we can get you one or two pairs of jeans. Which ones do you want? I was like, I want the MC Hammer ones, mom. The one with the elastic at the bottom. She's like, those are way too expensive. I can get you the same jeans and we could just roll up the bottoms. I'm like, but mom, people will notice. She's like, they won't notice anything. And I'm thinking, okay, if I could just endure this clothes section, then right around the corner are the toys. And she would say, we'll go to the toy section. We'll just get these jeans. And I got to make one more stop. And I'm thinking, oh, no, that means we got to go to the deli section. It's all the way across the store. And we go there and my mom's standing in line. She's got the ticket because she just needed a half pound of bologna on sale for lunch for the week. Now, my favorite times at the Super Kmart were during my teenage years, those years leading up to graduation with all my friends. In Medina, in a small town, there's not a lot to do after 10 p.m. So unless you want to hang out at someone's house, you only have a few options. And our go-to was, after 10, let's go crush some T-Bell. I mean, not just get a bite to eat, like crush tons of food for cheap. But there was a price to be paid because you would have to wait in this drive through because every kid in the city is there. It's a party. The inside is full. The restaurant, people sitting down. The drive through line seemed like it went for miles, but it didn't matter. Because you're just sitting in this little compact car with six of your friends and fighting over who's going to play whose CD and whose turn it is. It was awesome. And after we crushed the food, we'd head over to Super Kmart. And by that time, even in the late 90s, you know, the normal crowd dies down and you get the night crowd, which is not very many people. And so we'd go into the Super Kmart. It's like an admissions to a, to a museum, giant piece of real estate. We're walking through all the different aisles. We're running around with shopping carts. It was like it was our own personal playground. And I feel terrible now as an adult for all these people working the night shift, just trying to earn a living. And you got these idiot kids running around the store, never buying anything, maybe once in a while, if you found an extra dollar in your pocket. But from our perspective, it was our weird sort of corporate playground. And It had this bizarre music that would play. Kmart had its own radio station, but it would have this weird Kmart music sort of echoing through this giant store and you're with your friends and the music's almost hypnotic. You lose track of time. And I wonder sometimes if they composed the music in a way just to keep you in the store with no sense of time just for the prospect of buying one extra item. Here's the thing, though. Even Kmart Radio couldn't stop Kmart from dying. I started noticing it as a teenager, just less people in the parking lot day and night. And I didn't realize how big the parking lot was 
until I started seeing fewer and fewer cars. I mean, it felt like you could drive 10 minutes from one end to the other. That's how giant this parking lot was. And over time, I didn't know the contributing factors as to why. I didn't understand the business decisions that Kmart made or the changing economic times or the competition with Walmart taking a stronghold in communities across America. I didn't know any of this. What I what I could tell, the key indicator for me, was that the seagulls started to arrive when the parking lot started to get empty. These seagulls, and I'm 30 minutes from Lake Erie in Medina, south of Cleveland, so I don't know how the first seagull got there, like a scout or something, but they must have thought it was a body of water because it was so empty, like a coastline. And they started coming there. First it was dozens, then it was hundreds. And they were there right when I graduated high school. They were there when I went to college and then when I moved out to New York. And then when I moved back to Ohio and eventually moved back to my hometown, they just grew and grew and they were there. And in 2013, Super Kmart closed down completely, shut down. And so you had this empty parking lot and this giant store that you would drive by with nothing in it and you would just have hundreds of seagulls. And at first when I drove by, when I moved back, it made me sad, you know? But then I started thinking, these seagulls, they're making lemonade out of lemons. I should start doing the same thing. And at the time, I remember I had my daughter. She was about one or two. I was struggling, just trying to build my career, didn't have a lot of money. So I decided I would just get some day-old bread and we'd go out to the middle of the parking lot. She's got this day old bread and she's throwing the little pieces out to the seagulls and there's hundreds of them surrounding the car fighting over it it was like mania and i remember my daughter's face she was so excited she thought this was the coolest thing in the world and so i thought it was the coolest thing in the world because she did and she looked at me and i'll never forget this she smiled she's like dad can you promise that we can keep coming back to the seagull zoo and i looked at her and i looked up at the building where the super Kmart used to be. I could almost see myself going in there with my mom. And I looked back at her and I said, of course, sweetheart, we can come back to the seagull zoo. And we did for almost 10 years. She's 10 now. And that's how long that parking lot and that store has been vacant. But things might change because I just got word that they're probably going to be demolishing that building and building a new superstore. It's going to be a mire. And I know that's going to be a big deal for the community in the city as it once was in 1991. And I'm pretty sure they're going to keep the parking lot because they'll need all the spaces for all the people going there. But as I looked at that building the other day driving by, I just thought to myself, I got to tell this story to try to keep this memory alive for me and for my daughter. And the only thing I'm wondering is what's going to happen to the seagull zoo? Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Our senior audio engineer is Ken Went. Our resident artist is Pete Whitehead. Original music by TJ Duke. If you or your company needs help starting a podcast, Aaron and Ken's company, Valley View, does just that. Reach out to them at valleyview.fm. Special thanks to our partners at Evergreen Podcasts, and I'm Corey Burse. Make sure to tune in next week for another story.